and the aim is to use the satellite imagery to assist in the placement and timing of any further survey vessels. So a little bit more in depth about the project. First, I'll just give you an overview of uh, what exactly is involved in Earth observation techniques. And then we'll go through the aims and study. This slide shows a picture of the Invisat satellite. Um, it has 14 sensors, including an advanced synthetic aperture radar and various optical sensors. The Earth observation technique with regard to synthetic aperture radar um, is they have a, it is an active sensor and the data can be uh, acquired uh, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week in any weather conditions, night or day. The aperture or the synthetic aperture is a, has an apparent larger size of antenna as it's mounted on a moving platform. And this aperture creates um, artificially during the signal processing, giving it greater image resolution. And the signal received by the antenna from each transitor transmitted radar pulse is connected with characteristics of the target. And this determines our, our backscatter coefficient. Um, <coughs> this slide highlights uh, the responses of the uh, synthetic aperture radar images uh, which is relative to subsurface features. Water movement near shoals can give rise to areas of rough or breaking water. The rough water has a higher radar backscatter than surrounding calm water and is usually well imaged by the SAR. The pattern of rough water is governed by tidal stream rate and direction and also by the contour and shape of nearby shoals. Hence, the SAR image shows a pattern that is influenced by the topography of the shoal and any changes in the shoal topography could be expected to be seen as changes in subsequent SAR images. As far as the optical sensors go, these are passive sensors, sensors and uh, shows the coastal waters in a range of different hues. Um, dark hues for deeper water and light hues for shallower water. The sediments act as traces for indicating water movements and frontal boundaries adding to the correlation and assessment processes. They're also used in conjunction with airborne and spaceborne sensors in the thermal band, which can add to the assess assessment because the bodies of water with different temperature moving around the shows. So the aims of the test project would be to, or are, were, to determine if Earth observation can assist in detecting monitoring changes in location or topography of shoals, uh, conduct end-to-end -end practical feasibility assessment, and test the value of Earth observation while informing decisions on the implementation of a fully operational system to the GLAs. The initial desk study methods were set up to examine both the use of the optical sensors and the SAR sensors for measuring changes in bathymetry with three measurement methods investigated the first of which is the direct measurement method of bathymetry through attenuation of visible light with depth which is the optical sensing um, inference of change in bathymetry uh, by observation of change in sea surface patterns and influence of change due to uh, observation of sediment transport.
the results of this uh, essay are that can show the location and approximate shape of shoals. The image you can see here on the right shows SAR images or SAR images of the Thames estuary and it shows features that indicate approximate positions of submerged sandbanks and shoals. Its strong intensity variations at the location of the main shoals in the estuary where depths change from 20 metres to 2 to 3 metres in a lateral distance of a few hundred metres. The SAR measurements can show location and approximate shape of shoals. The home channel was investigated uh, for the visibility of shoal-like features. And this showed the outline of shoals observed in approximate V-shape year after year. The two pictures here, you can see the V and the V and uh, little or no change there. Tell you a little bit about now the, the optical measurements. Um, these can assist in the uh, bathymetric monitoring and determination. Um, unfortunately, their uh, optical measuring uh, in UK waters is not particularly productive due to the highly turbid waters and sediment movements. But in clear waters, such as in the Mediterranean, they can prove to be effective. The results of the uh, optical measurements of sediment flow, uh, it's possible to infer large changes in bathymetry by observing changes in the surface features. Um, and it can detect shoals that cause breakers. However, Subtle wave roughness changes are not visible and obviously in heavy cloud conditions this gives a significant disadvantage. It's unlikely to accurately quantify sediment concentrations at high loadings. I've just realised I've got a lot of time left and I'm nearly finished which might be a benefit to all of you. To summarise <coughs> and give some of the benefits then, um, Earth observation SAR data can be used by the GLAs to evaluate and manage risks. And the benefits include improvements in monitoring movements of shoals close to channels, wider and more routine monitoring of possible changes in shoals, potentially providing assessments of the impact of wind farm positioning on the seabed and contribute to more efficient scheduling of GLA assets. I'm very sorry I've underrun. I think it seems that we have uh, sufficient time for, for the floor to have questions and answers. The, op the open floor for questions? Mm -hmm. Thank you. 